Hey everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Nazma. And we're on a mission to connect, inform, and tell the world all about our startup community and everyone in it. Whether you're visiting us from social media, broadcast, or our podcast, we are coming to you from our studio, Made by Awesome, in downtown San Diego. And if you're looking to hear all about successes and failures, or wins and losses from entrepreneurs just like you, subscribe to our channel now to keep up to date with all the cool stuff we'll be talking about in business and in life. Startup Show San Diego gets into gear, gear and, and in, in your, your face right now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Startup Show San Diego. Episode three, Episode co-working. Episode three, yes. We're almost, well, I can't believe we've gotten here so far. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about co-working spaces today, um, and we have a very special guest, uh, Felila Hansen. But before we get there, um, Eric, do you want to mention a little bit? We do. We want to mention Griffin Online Safety. This is a router, probably the coolest router uh, you can see, but really hooking up to the internet is critical today, but it's dangerous. So this is easy to hook up easy to hook up together, but most of all, it adds intelligence with security um, to protect you and add control. We'll be talking a lot about this uh, later on. Especially if you have younglings, this is a great product for you. That's right. And I also want to say how excited I am to be working with Nazma for a couple reasons. New to the show, one is she had a design uh, experience. So she takes a design look at what we do, which I think is more and more important than most things these days. And also she has a quite a perspective. She's new to San Diego, so she's looking at everything we do with fresh eyes. Yet she can compare it to exciting places and communities, innovation communities like Dubai. Yeah, um, I guess I question everything, um, and I don't understand too much of the American culture, so I'm trying to understand that, too, in the process. <laughs> so she asks the questions, and, and, and uh, I mentioned this in, I think, episode one, is she doesn't think she's front of the camera person. Her, her goal was to sit behind the camera, and we put her down here with some very opinion people, and she held her own and put them in their place, and I said, no, no, you're in, in front of the camera. Now, person it was more nice. than me. I mean, I also like when I met you uh, at your workshop. Actually, that's something you guys should check out. Um, uh, formula Six. Big story formula. Big formally. story formula. Formula Six. That's true. Uh, that's where I met Eric, and it was pretty enlightening. Um, free. So yeah, definitely check yeah. it out, and it's for free right go, now. Look, just look at Meetup Big Story Formula uh, dot com or Big Story Formula. It's part of the um, uh, Business Network Connection. Uh, meet up and it's uh, it's great will transform the way you think about your business yeah. turning stories into leads especially if you're a startup it really helps um, so yeah look look that up Steve Bickle told me it's the best free meetup in San Diego there you go nice yeah. all right so let's get back to our show on co-working spaces and with us today is Felina Hansen she is the founder of Hira Hub um, which is all very exciting. It's an accelerator and a co-working space for women specifically. Um, hi, how hello. are you? Hello, happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, and I'd like to say that uh, Felina is a role model for anybody with a startup, anybody doing co-working. She's passionate, she's involved, and uh, she's always moving not just herself, but everything uh, forward. You can read her book, uh, Flight Club, which talks a little bit about rebelling. So we'll find out today whether she really is a rebel. Indeed, of course. I'm an entrepreneur. I have to be a rebel. Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess the first question is, how did co-working start in San Diego? What? I guess I'm more important. Why did it start yeah. in San Diego? Yeah, <laughs> it's a great question. I don't know that I have an answer to that, but I think co-working and this phenomenon has really come out of the growth of the independent workforce, as we like to say. So freelancers, contractors, entrepreneurs uh, kind of get lumped into that category. And right now, the estimate is that's about 33% of what we say the knowledge-based workforce, folks that use their brain for work. Uh, and a lot of folks are predicting that's going to be 50% uh, around 2020. So significant growth, continued growth in this uh, segment, if you will, of people working for themselves. So that's really where co-working grew from. Uh, most folks would attribute the, the birth of co-working to the Bay Area and a gentleman by the name of Adam Newman uh, about 11 or so years ago who got a bunch of buddies together in a 
his basement and they were coding together and thus birthed co-working. But a lot of folks would argue that this shared workspace environment has been around forever, right? I mean, everybody knows who Regis is. Mm -hmm. Um, But what I like to say is Regis is selling privacy. Co-working spaces are selling community. There's a big difference of walking down a hallway and closing a door and working in isolation versus co-working spaces. True co-working spaces are mostly open environments. So to answer your question, um, I came into the world of co-working in 2010. I was hosting an event, a fashion event, actually, an eco-fashion event. At the time, I was teaching part-time for the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising, downtown San Diego here. And I threw an event for some of my students who were graduating to allow them to network and grow and connect with the community in San Diego. And we threw that event at The Hive, which uh, most would say arguably that's our first co-working space in San Diego that was on 11th Avenue. Uh, Unfortunately, they are no longer a co-working space. It's now digital telepathy has taken over that space. Uh, But Jason Harper and Graham Downs founded that space um, right around that same time they had just opened at the beginning of 2010 when I threw that event there. And why did they want to create that space? What drove them to to want to work together. Yeah, what so, were they doing? so Graham uh, was an architect and Jason was a cultivator of community. And Graham had a, a great space there on 11th Avenue. And Jason, being in the creative marketing industry, wanted to get folks together mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, collaborate really. And so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess I want to know more about Hira Hub now. Like, how did that? Get yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I promise. I promise. So, um, so it was really that was the impetus. I threw this event. It, I had a marketing firm at the time. Uh, did marketing strategy work for service-based companies, relationship-driven companies, for about seven years. At that point, I'd had that business. And so I thought, this is really different. I had a lot of clients that were using old school executive suites, um, but that wasn't a fit for me. And I didn't need full time space. You know, I did want to work from home some days, right? Like, there's nothing better than working in your yoga pants some days. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's the way it is. <laughs> but there are some days you want to get out and connect and collaborate. Yeah. And so I actually looked at the Hive for myself in my business. I went back after the event, and it was really cool space, you know, concrete floors and beer keg and ping pong tables. And, yeah, it was super hip and super cool. At the time, I was in my late 30s, and I'm like, I'm not this cool. (laughs) I'm not going to – this is not the place that I'm going to, you know, exactly fit in, so to speak. (laughs) Um, But it did spark an idea. I was running a lot of professional women's organizations at the time, doing a ton of events. And it just sparked an idea to do a space that was Mm female-focused. So I do want to make that important distinction. Hera Hub, Hera, or Hera, being the Greek goddess of women, um, is female-focused, but absolutely not exclusive to women. And we do get lumped in that category, a lot of women-only co-working spaces. And just this last week, there's been a lot of media around that and you know that discrimination is uh is bad and it is i mean we don't discriminate we do have male members eric hangs out there all the time yesterday (laughs) yesterday he was hanging out there (laughs) yeah so really it's creating a space that is beautiful safe collaborative supportive uh the environment's quite different we call it spa inspired workspace you know immediately when you walk in it's it's zen it's tranquil it's beautiful it smells good um and it's productive and collaborative and if men enjoy that environment they are more than welcome to join us as well do you see more men joining um Hira Hub uh, recently? It's, or, no, or, not necessarily. From no. the beginning, we've always had a small percentage of members who are men, yeah. and and some men enjoy that environment, yeah. and it's it's not for everybody. Right. Just like other co-working spaces, I mean, everybody has their niche, and I know we're going to get into that, is, you know, there's so much room in the market. There mm-hmm. are so many people working for themselves. This co-working uh, model, so to speak, is just taking off. And I'd like to say that even though there are women there, women tend to interact with men so even if they're not members and there are male members yeah there are a lot of men that come in just to have meetings Absolutely. and things uh you were doing a leadership seminar yesterday that had men and women uh that are uh drawn to the space to yeah. have a meeting yeah i when i 
decided I was going to do this, Jason Harper and I started looking for space in kind of central or south end of North County, Solana Beach area, because he wanted to do a second space for the Hive. And so we looked at a space on Cedros. Um, actually, uh, what ended up happening is a co-working space called Cedros Works went into the space that I was looking at. Uh, the owner of the, uh, the building said, hey, this is a good idea. I think I'm going to do it on my own after. A little bit of competition is always yeah, good. exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So uh, there was a second space we looked at, but long story short, about a 10-month process, uh, we ended up in Sorrento Valley for our first location. Um, And I did pre-launch the business for four months in a dance studio, basically, because it took me so long to get our first space. And uh, it was a great way to just kind of test the model, if you will, and get people excited about it. So I officially opened doors of our first location, August 2011. And then, uh, as you alluded to, Eric, uh, we quickly opened our second space in Mission Valley, uh, where you were yesterday, uh, in October 2012. So it was about six months after I had opened my first space. I had a lot of members saying, hey, I live down in Chula Vista. I'm not driving to Sorrento Valley on a daily or weekly basis. I want something closer to home. And then demand in North County, we opened our third location in Carlsbad in July 2013. So in the span of two years, I opened three locations, which was uh, great and challenging all at the same time. Um, But the demand was there for what we were doing. And what makes Hera Hub unique beyond the the space itself is the sense of community and education support and resources. Mm -hmm. So on a daily basis, there are activities, workshops, mentoring happening at Hera Hub. Um, And then we also have two separate nonprofit entities um, that were founded by Dr. Sylvia Ma, who uh, is an amazing woman here in town and has done so much for the startup community. So Hera Labs is a formal business accelerator program for both launch stage and growth stage, the the kind of traditional 12-week program where you go through. Um, But to answer your earlier question, uh, our members stay in the space. We have members who've been with us since day one. They've been members almost seven years. And so, you know, it's not an environment where folks go through and we push them out into the world, they have a place to nest, so to speak, in Hera Hub, even after going through the accelerator. And then Hera Angels is an educational nonprofit that really is uh, there to inspire more women to become angel investors, to learn about angel investing, to learn about how to position their business for uh, an equity raise. And we do the Hera Venture Summit at University of San Diego every September, where we bring female angels from all over the world to San Diego. So you pretty much cover you're all rounded like <laughs> yes. really covered within the your yes. own hub so absolutely do you have everything in each location or do you sign up in that location and then it happens in different places yeah so most everything happens in each location the Hera labs uh intensives as we call them happen in our sorrento valley mm-hmm. location which is the most central located you were telling us about one of your um, success stories yeah. earlier before we started the yeah. show. Oh, would you like to mention that? Is that something yeah, that we, we have so, so many. And, you know, I think another thing that makes us a little different than some of the other co-working spaces is our members are pretty much from every single industry, every aspect. We're not uh, focused on tech per se. Mm-hmm. We do have a few folks in technology, but by and large, our members are not in tech. Yeah, they're attorneys, they're writers, they're product developers. Uh, the one I was mentioning, uh, Nicole McDonald, she's an, such an amazing woman and so uh, just has done so much for the startup industry in San Diego for women, specifically in that product development segment that yeah. kind of gets ignored mm-hmm. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she developed a product called the Sash Bag. Uh, she launched right about the time Hera have launched and has been a member since then. And that product is now selling millions of dollars a year online. She's selling 100% online and sells more outside of the U.S. than she does in the U.S. It's an incredible story. Um, But from that, she found a pain point in selling uh, via Facebook Live. She does a lot of sales through Facebook Live, um, but the collection of money through that process was such a nightmare. And so she went and developed a platform called Lash Live 
that facilitates the payment processing through Facebook Live. And they're in beta, they're launching that right now. It's such an incredible product. I'm so excited for her. So it's a product person who's now developed a tech company out of the need in the market. That's it's really awesome to hear that. Um, I guess for the audience and for me too, then can you just explain a little bit more on how Hira Hub had helped her to get to that point? Yeah, you know? through that, she found partners, she found her advisory board, she found not only her first investor, but multiple rounds of investment yeah. for the sash bag. Um, she found uh, vendors, she found her attorney. I mean, pretty much everything I she needed was either under that roof or able to be referred. Nice. I Great. mean, I feel like it's the true... Yeah, the true, true meaning of co-working, co-working right? Exactly. Is, we talked about this earlier, too, Eric. You said the same thing. You know, it's when you're launching something, you need that support and community. And I would argue you need it on an ongoing basis, mm-hmm. too. We do see companies that are like, we've outgrown you. And we celebrate that. That's, that's amazing. But there's still a need for connection and community, even if you've outgrown your co-working space. Yeah. So I do want to take a break because we have our uh, pitch of the day. Yes. So the pitch of the day, what we've done is we try and feature a San Diego company so they get practice in front of the mic or the camera and they get some exposure. Um, and yeah. and uh, today's pitch of the day is Griffin. This is for everybody. I've mentioned this before as well, but for every episode, we're going to be showcasing one company um, every week. So, yeah, look out for pitch of the days. They're awesome. So check out... Uh, Griffin, and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is John. I'm the CEO of Griffin. Griffin is a network protection platform for homes and small businesses. The problem with uh, today's connected world is that we have so many connected devices. We have over 20 billion connected devices, and that's growing to over 74 billion connected devices. The reason I started this company is because a couple years ago, my daughter was actually online uh, doing searches, and um, a bunch of inappropriate material came up. And as a dad, um, that was a moment where I felt like I needed to do something. and. Uh, That's part of the reason why I started Griffin. Managing internet activity is the number one problem with parenting today. And we hope that Griffin can be a solution to make that job a little bit easier for parents. Griffin is a smart Wi-Fi router that can essentially replace your home or small business Wi-Fi router. And not only bringing you internet connection, but also protects all the different devices that are connected to your Griffin Wi-Fi router. The way that Griffin protects your network is by blocking on the network level, inappropriate content that might be coming into your home, as well as malware that might be reaching your devices. You can find Griffin on our website or on Amazon. And don't worry, Griffin is priced comparably to all the other routers that you see that supports wireless mesh and the latest Wi-Fi technology to give you the fastest throughput in your home, as well as the coverage that you need. Griffin is smart. We use the latest in artificial intelligence to detect threats now and also in the future. You can find us online at griffinconnect.com. That's G-R-Y-P-H-O-N connect.com. Or look us up on Facebook at Griffin Social, G-R-Y-P-H-O-N. What were the biggest challenges do you think a co-working space has and how did you overcome those? Sure, absolutely. So co-working spaces have come and gone in San Diego over the last seven years that I've been in, uh, you know, in the game, so to speak. I think the biggest reason for that is focus generally. A lot of folks will start a co-working space because they maybe have a core business and they want to have access to talent or a network around their business. So we see this start a lot in the creative uh, segment, Mm -hmm. folks that maybe are graphic designers or web developers and they say, hey, I need space for my office, let me get some extra space and we'll put up some desks and we'll invite writers and videographers and other folks 
products that are ancillary to the business into the space. So they're not really focused on the co-working space as being their core business. This also happens in commercial real estate a lot. Someone owns a building, they say, hey, I heard about this thing called co-working and you can make a ton of money, which is not true, uh, frankly. <laughs> If you want to make a ton of money, don't open a co-working space. I'm just going to lay it out there right now because it is a lot of work and they don't realize to really connect the community, to really bring people together and provide the level of education and support and sense of community that you need to make a co-working space thrive. It is a ton of work. It's not you put up four walls, people come and community happens. So, yeah, And I think uh, Darren Anderson has said that he's never taken a paycheck. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> true. Here, yeah. He's got a very thriving, active space. He, he does, yeah. And he specializes in cybersecurity and, and businesses around that, which is an awesome, awesome niche. And that's, that's a really good point to bring up. A lot of co-working spaces have a particular focus. Our focus is on women. Darren Space, Nest, and, and high, um, Cyber Such Hive. Uh, he's got a couple names that uh, he goes under as far as that uh, segment, but the cybersecurity space. Um, there are some co-working spaces that are focused on more creative folks, uh, social entrepreneurs, tech, um, and that's what makes each space unique, and there's plenty of room in the market. We do really encourage collaboration. That's the core of co-working, and so let's collaborate with all the spaces in San Diego, and that's what the San Diego Co-working Alliance that I co-founded, gosh, almost seven years ago, really tries to do is let's promote San Diego is a place to launch a business. That's why I joined the board of Startup San Diego. Mm -hmm. This is a place to launch and grow a business and stay and give back to the community. So uh, those communities that uh, change their focus and succeed or loss, tell us uh, more about why you think the ones that aren't here anymore aren't here and why you think the ones that are here are still here. Yeah, it really goes back to that focus, to be honest. I mean, folks, they get in and they realize, wow, this is much more work than I thought it would be, and I'm just going to go back and focus on my core business because that's what really makes the money, honestly. And so folks, I mean, going back to the, the space up on Cedros Works, you know, the, the owner of the building said, well, I'm going to do this myself, and then he, you know, realized after a couple of years, like, this is a lot of work. I, I'm better off just owning the building and leasing it out to a larger tenant. Mm -hmm. And so I see that over and over and over again. And I really caution if somebody wants to open a co-working space, this should be your number one primary focus to make it work well. Okay. So co-working is a side business. A little don't, rough. Don't, <laughs> don't, but yeah, I just, I don't recommend it. I mean, there are enough options Unless out there. passionate about it, don't. Yeah, and, and you or you want to hire somebody who's passionate about it to, to focus full time. I had a conversation with a woman in the Bay Area who mm -hmm. reached out to me. Same exact thing. She owns an engineering firm. She wanted to take on extra space. I said, do not do it. Find one tenant for that 2,500 square feet and don't try to manage a co-working space on top of it. Yeah. So how about the creator spaces you basically talked about where you have a bunch of, for, for example, the space we're in in this uh, we have all kinds of social media and performance marketing going on. That That's a plus for us. Yeah, and so that's a good point, Eric. I mean, you could call this a co-working space if you wanted to. And I, I think therein lies the opportunity and the challenge is almost anything. I mean, you could call Starbucks a co-working space, right? I mean, where people are working around each other could be a co-working space. But I think that's the challenge is everybody's using that word these days and a true co-working space where there's programming and support and resources and that is the focus is getting a little diluted by everybody on the planet saying they have a co-working space yeah this is not open to everybody yeah. people are yeah. here for specific reasons sure. because we have a very targeted focus yeah Yep. Yeah, you know. I mean, so bring, I, mean, I really like that term, true co-working space, because yes, the term has diluted a lot. Um, I guess coming back to Hira, or just like generally when people are looking for co-working spaces, what should they, or who is that person that fits into that environment? Yeah. How can they define that? Absolutely. So in general, I have seen, and I'll just speak to introverts versus extroverts. Yeah. Uh, if somebody is highly introverted, um, they may not be a good fit for a co-working space, to be honest, because there's a lot of activity, there's a lot happening. And if you don't work well in that activity and you don't you know, gain energy from the energy of others, if that drains you, then 
frankly, you, you may not be a good candidate for a co-working space. Looking for the types of businesses that you want to connect with, that sense of community is critically important. What's the programming look like? How are the folks that are running that space connecting you with other people in that space, cultivating those mm -hmm. connections? And frankly, the proximity. I mean, let's be honest, San Diego, my goodness. I mean, if I, I live in North Park, and if I try to drive to Sereno Valley before 10 a.m. or come back after 2 p.m., it's I'm sitting in a parking lot, right? And so, you know, proximity to space, we, we find, I've had members in our Carlsbad location who lived in Orange County mm -hmm. who would drive down because there was nothing like this up there. We're working on expanding to Orange mm -hmm. County right now through our licensing model, but you know, it's on a long-term basis, folks are not going to consistently drive 45 minutes to go to a co-working space. So proximity is a big part of it, too. And I think having a connector may be important depending on what you're doing. If you're just online yourself, you need a place to work, well, maybe you need someone to talk to as a break, a sense of community. But uh, I know when uh, I started in the first startup, we had paying with answer. Mm -hmm. And he was a guy who knew everybody. Yeah. So if we needed a programmer or needed somebody that could do uh, solid state chip technology, he would know somebody. True. I mean, an example True. of that is you've got Hera Hub and Hera Labs. That's yeah. an example of what I'm talking True. about is you built connectors yeah. into your uh, purpose, into yeah. your infrastructure. So let's dive into WeWork for a second. So I respect WeWork tremendously. They have done uh, such an amazing uh, job of creating awareness around co-working, frankly. I mean, you know, when I started this business seven years ago, 97% of the people I would talk to didn't know what a co-working space was. Now, you know, I'd say 80% of people do know what it is. I mean, there's still a little education, but WeWork has really paved the way. So the way I look at WeWork is they have disintermediated the commercial real estate industry. I mean, they are really to some extent, cutting out the commercial broker market, right? And we see this, I think about 30% of their tenants now are, you know, almost Fortune 1000 companies. I mean, very large companies who have a lot of remote workers or small offices throughout the country, and they can engage with WeWork just like they did Regis, right? Maybe 10 years ago, WeWork has really started to kind of fill that segment for a younger demographic. You know, sometimes I say WeWork is Regis with some hip environment and, you know, a kombucha keg, right? I mean, <laughs> and so, but it, it's great. It's really serving a particular market. And if you really look at WeWork, yes, they have some open space, but the majority of their space is private offices. Yes, glass, so you can kind of see through the space. It has that feeling of openness. But we have lost, I would say, since we worked open in San Diego about a year and a half ago, we've lost maybe three members in that year and a half period. And those were folks that needed private office space. We have very little private office space at Hera Hub. It's mostly open, mostly flex. And so if folks need private offices, that's a great, great option for them. So I respect WeWork. I welcome WeWork. My only beef <laughs> with WeWork is when they take some predatory uh, angles in their marketing. So... They have done that here in San Diego and a number of other cities where they'll set up. In fact, they set up in front of downtown works mm -hmm. and I, they must have gotten a movie permit for the day or something. And they set up a whole living room with Wi-Fi and free food. And, you know, that's that's not very nice, not very cool of them to do that, to be very predatory in their marketing. Um, but beyond that, I, I mean, they've done a lot for the industry and I really respect that. And I think there's a lot uh, that has to do with the scale of a business or the phase of a business. Because yeah. at first you're trying to get direction and inspiration and you kind of need that community to keep you going. And a lot of times independent places like Hera Hub are really good, downtown works are really good at connecting that. Then when you have something that starts to work, now it ends up being a lot of testing and you can get a lot of embedded support to get the presence to say, let me talk about my router, let me yeah. talk about that kind of stuff. And then when it comes to scale, sometimes multiple locations is a huge it advantage yeah. where you can go to New York and somebody uh, in the in a community like we work can help you out and say, you need to talk to this person Absolutely. in New York. So yep. I, I think scale, like Regis, you know, a lot yeah. of people, um, you know, I used to uh, go into Regis office in cities way off because uh, you need that connection. But um, 
the connection at places that we work are way better in yeah, terms of no, community absolutely. than like regions. Yeah, because they really have taken the co-working angle. And one thing to, to distinguish um, is you, you said the phrase when it really starts to work. I think what is important to distinguish is the different types of businesses. So by and large, the types of businesses that are members of Hera Hub are not the next Airbnb. They are solopreneurs. They are solo practice attorneys, folks in bookkeeping or finance, marketing professionals, you know, writers, authors, uh, nonprofits. Those folks are not trying to scale to 100 employees or 100 million in revenue. They're you know they've created great local businesses that are supporting the community and that's what they want to do which is fine that doesn't mean they're not important businesses but that's why most of our members haven't outgrown us and we we welcome that they're they like the community they like the space they like having a small business and and that's really where our niche is so if you were to say the thing that you're most excited about in the next year to three years in co-working what are you personally most excited about yeah i think just talking about some of the trends in co-working we continue to see what would be referred to as niche markets in co-working um you know co-working and rock climbing co-working and yoga co-working and you know all kinds of different things um the maker spaces continue to to segment out into different types of maker spaces Mm -hmm. So I think that's a natural course of an industry, right? It, it grows, and then you start to see a little more fragmentation in, in niche markets. Uh, some would say the focus on women is a niche market, although that segment is growing quite a bit and has gained a lot of traction. I mean, do you feel like going in down that direction where it's kind of segmenting all these little fields, isn't it like against the whole idea of no, co-working? No, not at all. Like no. if you're saying rock climbing, wasn't the whole point of doing this is that different communities get together? No, it's, you know, we've taken the tactic of slicing the pie in a little different way, whereas yeah. they're slicing the pie based on a particular industry. So no, I mean, the, the concept of co-working is creating community. Yeah just absolutely number one. And so the community can come together in all different types of ways. Uh, I, I didn't say this, but I'll, I'll take the, the phrase from yeah. somebody else who has done a lot of research on this. Some folks are calling co-working the new church. <laughs> With the decline of, you know, generations going to church and interacting and creating that community at a church or a synagogue or, you know, whatever yeah. it is, co-working has started to fill that void. I mean, we still need connection. Social media is important, but it's still important to look somebody in the eye and shake their hand as well and work elbow to elbow with them on a daily or weekly basis. So some folks are saying co-working is the new church. So real quickly for if a co-working isn't intense enough for you, I was hoping to have David Lowe come in and it just give, give us at least a primer that may be a whole nother show on co-living yes what yes do you think yeah. of, what do you think of yeah. co-living i think it's great for a certain segment one of my longtime friends christine mcdaniel who had eco chateau she sold that she now has a co-living entrepreneur co-living uh, space here in san diego she's looking to do that in los angeles there are a few folks playing that market and we work as playing in that market as well Um, I think it's fantastic for the right segment. The market I serve is not, they're not going to leave their house in Carmel Valley to go, you know, be in a bachelor pad (laughs) with a bunch of 22 year old entrepreneurs. I mean, my members have children and families and, you know, all kinds of things going on, you know. So for the right segment, I think it's absolutely awesome so co-working for families is next that's what I mean. <laughs> well scandinavia so we have a, a location in sweden and the scandinavians do co-living situations quite a bit and uh so maybe maybe so this is a market for everything somewhere. absolutely absolutely <laughs> in august around international co-working day the san diego co-working alliance so those are locally owned and operated co-working spaces here in san diego who have stepped into a very collaborative business model we do a co-working week so folks can visit co-working spaces that are part of the alliance for free throughout that week there's all kinds of events and that's happening uh, international co-working day is august 9th nice. so it's happening that entire week of Good. august 9th and how do they find out more about international co-working week yes so san diego co-working.com great and you can try out lots of different 
styles of co work. Yes. There's, yeah, I think every day there's a different one normally <laughs> yeah. and well, lots of parties also too. Also, we'll yep. have this all, all this information somewhere down in the video. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> just, just, look, just look down just there. Look, just look below. Right. Look below. <laughs> look over there. We'll, we'll plaster it there. And if somebody wants to find out more about Hera Hub, yes. where would they go? Yes. Yep. Just herahub.com, H E R A H U B.com. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it was great having you on the show. My pleasure. Um, want to thank our sponsor again, uh, Griffin. And uh, so, again, Griffin is you put your router down, you get out your phone, you program it, you program all your devices, your kid's device, your devices, um, and it'll go ahead proactively keep bad things from coming in, but also keep you keep your kids from looking at bad things out. Uh, latest in uh, security, latest in Wi-Fi mesh technology, awesome product. I'm really happy. I mean, this is actually mine. Um, this isn't just a prop. This is, this is actually mine, and I, I bought the two-pack. You can get Griffin uh, at, uh, where's their website? It's uh, You can get them on Amazon, but you can also get them at griffinconnect.com, G-R-Y-P-H-O-N. Connect. C-O-N-N-E-C-T. So that's Stay great. safe. Stay safe online um so just a reminder please follow us uh, on our instagram and facebook on startup show sd and our youtube channel startup show san diego yep. also on twitter and startup show sd and if you've got a great idea for us you'd like to be on the show or you'd like to join our great sponsors like griffin or wrist roller got a wrist roller over there yes griffin or wrist roller um or MWorks, uh, just go to our website, startupshowsd.com. There's a form there. You can talk about your idea or what you want. Or um, if you'd like to sponsor uh, either the show or one of our free video days or something like that. Yeah, just shoot us a line. Just shoot us a line. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Great. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.